All right, hello once again, Jeff Scott of Rankin Technical College. I've been putting together a series of video presentations based on the two textbooks that are being used for the Rankin Technical College AWD Application and Website Development 1000 Web Development Technologies class. The two books are Murox, HTML5, and CSS3 4th edition, and I've already done over 20 uh, lectures on the uh, uh, those PowerPoints. And Murox, JavaScript, and jQuery 3rd edition, where I am right now. I've already done and completed lectures on chapters 1 through 7 and 13 through 16. Now I'm in the middle of chapter 17. There's 18 total chapters. So tomorrow when I come in, I'll do chapter 18 and then start on 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12 and see how much I can get done there. All right? So I'm in the middle, like I said, of chapter 17. This is the create method for the object. So notice how to use the create method to create a new object. All right, object.create. So it's the same thing as using this. All right. And with some of this stuff, sometimes people say, well, one way is easier than the other. Then use that way. Why do we, why do we have two ways? Sometimes a more antiquated way or a longer way was created to begin with, and then a shorter way comes. Sometimes the, the longer way allows you to do things that you can't do with a shorter way. All right. So here's a custom prototype object with a method. All right. Here's one that we do, and again, we're doing it with a create method, so we're adding a bunch of stuff to it in there. All right. Now, we'll talk about factory functions. So let's look. What I like to do with this, and you don't have to do this, I guess you kind of have to watch, but I'm going out to Wikipedia, all right? And in Wikipedia here, I spelled it wrong. All right. I'm going to come in there. Hopefully, that's uh, there. That's correct. I'm going to type in their factory pattern. All right, they've got factory method pattern. That'll work. In class-based programming, an object-oriented programming uses classes. The factory method pattern is a creational pattern that uses factory methods to deal with the problem of creating objects without having to specify the exact class of the object that will be created. This is done by creating objects by calling a factory method. All right, so it's not a shortcut but it's a design pattern. It's a way of trying to solve a problem, all right, that's designed to be flexible and, and reusable. So it says the factory method pa design pattern solves different kinds of problems, all right. Creating an object directly within a class that requires or uses the object is inflexible. So what the factory method does is it defines a separate operation for creating an object and it creates the object by calling a factory method. Clear as mud, right? What they're saying is it's allowing you to be more flexible in the way that you do things. All right? And again, we'll go over this some more in class. All right? I'm not running through any of this stuff right now. But the idea is quite often when you do this stuff, when you first create things, It'll seem like you're doing, wow, I'm doing so much more work. This is so much harder. But the idea is you're making something that's more, for lack of better words, malleable. So it'll be able to be like silly putty or taffy where you can stretch it and make it do a lot of things. All right. Two methods that modify an object but don't return an object. It says chaining these method calls won't work. They must be called one at a time. When you chain, you're saying, do this, call this, then call this. All right? But since it doesn't return something, there's nothing to return right there. So you can't change. Chain, rather. When you're chaining, you are using the output from this method as the input to this method. But since there is no output from here, you must do them separately. That's what the author is saying. All right. Notice the this. This, for lack of better words, is the context of what you're currently working on. It doesn't make a boatload of sense until you start looking at it. All right? All right. 
how to inherit methods using constructors. This is not the way inheritance takes place in a true object-oriented programming language. In C Sharp, for example, if I wanted to create a new, uh, if I want a commission to inherit from percent, I'd say commission colon percent. If I wanted to do it in Java, I'd say that would be class commission colon percent. If I wanted to do it in Java, it would be class commission extends percent. So they're showing here how you can do it in JavaScript. There is a boatload of code in here. In this particular chapter, more code than normal. Not a bad thing. All right, that's a great way to learn. I'm just trying to give you some of the, you know, I'm giving you what, the 35,000 foot view? So I'm giving you a high level overview of what's going on here. The value of the, this keyword depends on how the function is invoked. Notice it could be defined, could be the object that contains the function, it could be the object that raised the event. In other words, if you click the button, it would be the button. So they come back again, and notice on here, now we add tasks. We can bring up the date picker and add a new task. All right. We can clear any task we want, or we can clear all tasks. I kind of like that. All right. There's the HTML for it, the CSS, and the JavaScript. Where again, they're coming in and they are using um, lost my train of thought. All right. They're using an existing example, all right, for lack of better words. And here's that countdown app we looked at earlier. They're using libraries again, a change calculator, and that pig game that they had a long time ago, along with our old tried and true miles per gallon program. So that's it for this chapter. Now, the next chapter that I will go over, not today, I don't have time, my students will be coming in shortly, but the next chapter is chapter 18, by far the hardest chapter in the book. How to create and use closures, what are called ifies, the module pattern, and plugins. All right, so I will start with that tomorrow. When I get done with that, I will be going through Uh, where is it? Afterwards, I'm going to start on the second section. This is all jQuery. So 1 to 7 was basically all JavaScript. Much of 13 through 18 was also just vanilla Java, generic JavaScript. 8 through 12 is jQuery, which is a JavaScript library. So tomorrow I'll start with 18, and I'll jump into 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. My hope is to have this done by the end of the week, you know, and it, and it is the middle of February, so that probably won't matter to any of you anyway. But I want to put this stuff out there and have links to it so that anybody who might take this class in fall will be able to see, for lack of better words, as the saying goes, what they're getting themselves into. Lastly, if I can finish this, get done with 18, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12, by this week, then starting next week, over probably about the next three weeks, I'm going to build a website. I'm going to start with nothing, and I'm going to grab information. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to grab information from virtually every chapter in this book. All right. And then when we get done with that, we'll go over to this book, and we'll add some JavaScript and some jQuery and some of this stuff. I probably won't create my own object. I probably won't have ifies, etc. in here. All right. But again, I just wanted you to know where we currently stand in here, what we have been working on, what we will continue to be working on. Okay? Thanks for listening.